radionuclides and the radiation they emit can be used to check human health and to treat diseases. In hospitals there is a specific department that deals with the use of radioisotopes for diagnosis and therapy. This is the nuclear medicine department. The use of radioisotopes requires personnel to undergo specialized training in safe handling of radioisotopes and in radiation protection. A typical nuclear medicine department incorporates medical doctors, nurses, physicists, chemists, radiochemists, technologists, pharmacists and radiation safety officers. Based on the application, nuclear medicine can be broadly classified into diagnostic imaging and therapy. They both are based on use of radiopharmaceuticals. For both imaging and therapy, the selection of the right radioisotope depends on the emitted radiation type and on their chemistry. Positron and gamma ray emitters are typically used for imaging, whereas electron and alpha emitters are more suited for therapy. Of course, the half-life of the radioisotopes also plays an important role. The half-life has to allow the completion of the examination or treatment, but cannot be too long and cause unnecessary radiation exposure to the patient. Depending on the radioisotope, it can be prepared using particle accelerators such as cyclotrons or nuclear reactors. Cyclotrons are used to generate radioisotopes like gallium-67, fluorine-18 and indium-111. Nuclear reactors produce a whole range of radioisotopes from the fission of enriched uranium-235. Many of these radioisotopes, such as molybdenum-99, cobalt-60 and iodine-125, are very important radioisotopes in nuclear medicine and are separated out from the radionuclide mixture using physicochemical methods. After production, purity of the isolated radionuclide has to be checked. Besides the selected radioisotope, the presence of undesired radioisotopes can be measured using a gamma spectrometer. Most radioisotopes cannot be used in the form they were produced. Instead, they have to be modified to be used as radiopharmaceuticals. The diagnosis of diseases can be done, for example, by functionalizing molecules which mimic the in vivo behavior of natural molecules with radioisotopes commonly known as radiotracers. An example of this is the study of glucose in the body. Glucose, labelled with radioactive fluorine 18, can be used to trace the level of glucose metabolism in the body. A subset of radiotracers work by binding to receptors in the body. They are known as radioligands and they can help to determine, for example, overexpression of disease markers. The radio-labeled compound ready to be injected into the patient is called a radiopharmaceutical. A radiochemist is the person responsible for the synthesis of radiopharmaceuticals. This is referred to as radiosynthesis. Radiosynthesis can be performed manually or using automated synthesizers. Radiochemists work in lead-shielded radiochemical hoods called hot cells with the help of manipulator arms or remote handling. Radius pharmaceuticals are used to detect organ or gland malfunction, bone imaging, studying biomolecules and electrolytes and in oncology. As an example, a kidney cancer which has spread to the bone can be detected with fluorine 18 labeled glucose by exploiting the metabolic activity of the tumor. Positrons and gamma rays emitted by the radiopharmaceutical given to the patient are detected using different diagnostic techniques. Positron emission tomography and single photon emission computed tomography are the most commonly used clinical imaging techniques. 
the interaction of the positron with an electron leads to a process called annihilation, which is the release of a pair of gamma rays in opposite direction. In PET imaging, the coincidence detection of these pairs of gamma rays using skin dilators is used to determine the origin of the radiation. In SPECT imaging, the gamma rays are scanned in two dimensions using the gamma camera, which are then applied to tomographic reconstruction, resulting in 3D images. Fluorine 18 and gallium 68 are commonly used PET isotopes, whereas iodine 123 and technetium 99M are used in SPECT imaging. Electrons and alpha particles emitted by the radiopharmaceutical can also be used to treat diseases such as cancer. Radiation breaks DNA, thereby killing the cells. Since the DNA damage can occur both in healthy and diseased tissue, the radiopharmaceutical has to be specifically targeted to the disease site so that only the diseased tissue is affected. The radiation can be applied externally, like in the case of external beam therapy, or internally when injected as a radiopharmaceutical. In the case of external irradiation, the radiation beams are applied from several angles to deliver maximum dose at the diseased site, while minimizing the damage to normal tissue. In brachytherapy, the radioisotope contained in a metal wire sheath or in small beads is placed near the tumor site for site-specific damage. There are certain radioisotopes which are commonly used for making therapeutic radiopharmaceuticals as well as those which are applied for brachytherapy. To be used in imaging or therapy, the radio-labeled compounds have to fulfill the same safety requirements as pharmaceuticals, upon which they can be referred to as radiopharmaceuticals. For the radiopharmaceutical product to be commercially viable, the medical radioisotope must be produced economically in large scale with high purity on a regular basis. Quality control of radiopharmaceuticals is of paramount importance. It concerns the maintenance of product properties against a set of specifications. For human use, the specifications are dictated by the guidelines issued by regulatory authorities, which are called good manufacturing practices. The guidelines are placed to ensure that the products are consistently produced and controlled according to quality standards. Nuclear medicine has come a long way since the first use of radioisotopes in the early 1900s. It is now the standard mode of care for the diagnosis and treatment of many diseases. It is evident that the contribution of experts from different disciplines is paramount to this field. A radiochemist responsibility is to guarantee safe handling of radioisotopes to find and use optimal conditions for radiosynthesis and to produce high-quality radiopharmaceuticals according to the standards.